Hey 49ers fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports and today we do another 49ers mailbag where I answer all the questions submitted by you on my most recent YouTube video here on Chat Sports. Again, if you use the hashtag 49ers and then you ask a question on one of our previous videos, I most likely didn't get to everybody, but I got to the majority of your questions. We're going to answer them, go through them one by one. Before we go though, right, before, before, before we start, if you're watching this on our Chat Sports YouTube page, that's great. You should be subscribed here, but go ahead and find our Chat Sports 49ers only YouTube page, searching www.com uh, chat sports slash 49ers or going into YouTube and typing 49ers report. Subscribe to that. If we get 1,000 followers on that channel, plenty more 49ers videos would be coming to you guys on a daily basis here for your viewing pleasure. So go ahead, before we start, pause, go subscribe to both. Then come back and we'll go ahead and jump in and answer your questions right now. So, let's see. Starting off, number one, Ezekiel um, Caranco. I believe I said that name correctly. I might butcher your name, right? Just how it works. Uh, asks, when will Jason Brett be ready to go? Now, Jason Brett was the cornerback from San Diego that we signed in the offseason on a one-year prove it deal. He's coming off of the ACL injury suffered at training camp with the Chargers last year. All right, so that's what we're running here. When is he going to be healthy? Before we answer, quickly, I'll say, Barrett's dealt with a ton of injuries throughout his career. Like, I don't think he's had a full season, when I look back, that did not have some sort of injury. And, of course, last year during training camp, the ACL was an issue. So, he did not participate in any of the team-on-team -team drills during the offseason. We reported that earlier here on Chat Sports. But everything that I was able to gather that he should be good to go day one when the 49ers, depending on when you watch this video, they might already be in camp or they might be a day away from camp. When the 49ers go into camp, he should be good to go. He might be limited a little bit, maybe not in on 11 on 11, but one on one drill, seven on seven, he should be ready to roll. And Jason Verrett, again, is an interesting piece here at the cornerback position. I've said many times, I think it'll be a killer Witherspoon along with uh, Richard Sherman to be the two outside cornerbacks. Jason Verrett could have an excellent preseason could have an excellent start to the year and actually take some playing time away from either of them, right? Richard Sherman's too old, if he's you know, too, too slow, if he struggles, or for Rhett, you know, the youth is still a problem, he could take either one of their spots. So everything I've, everything I've seen, that he should be good to go for training camp, depending on when you watch this, it might already be started. So you might already be like, oh, well, he's in there, Thomas was right, or, oh, he had a setback, Thomas was wrong. Just, just remember when the video actually came out. Okay, um, Solstice XL on YouTube asks, Sounds good. Will the four, will, will Thomas Mott be traded to the 49ers? And if so, uh, will he really impact the secondary? Great question, right? Thomas Mott, great talent coming out of Baylor right now. A little bit undersized in terms of height, but the muscle on him and the looks are absolutely fantastic. Um, no, this is all, this is a joke. This is, we'll get back to the real questions here in a second. I did play cornerback and quarterback for my intramural team when I was going to Baylor, and I did have seven touchdowns in one game. Got like 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four speed, so I'll just, I'll leave it at that. You know what, we'll ask a question here. Would you be a fan of Thomas Mott getting traded to the Niners type Y for yes and for no? How about that down below? I uh, should be see a lot of Ys down below, by the way. Okay, I'm watching you guys. A lot of Ys down below. Okay, all right, this is a, this is a regular guy here on the 49ers mailbag, Fart Attack 101. Um, he asked 49ers, uh, hashtag 49ers, who do you think will make the Pro Bowl from the Niner roster? Great question. We've dappled in this a little bit in the past. I here's five players on the board I think could make it and listed in the order that it actually might happen. So obviously Kittle, I think, could be the one lock. Like if you're gonna bet money on who the 49ers will or Pro Bowlers will be, Kittle would be one of those if he's healthy, because he's easily a top five tight end in the league, probably number two in the NFC behind, behind Zach Ertz. He's great. I think he he could go. Jimmy G makes a lot of sense because he could have a bounce back massive year, but as we've said before. There are a lot of other quarterbacks in the NFL or in the the, the, uh, the NFC that could have, been, have have bigger years. Juszczyk made it last year, could go back again. Buckner, 12 sacks last season, right? The force Buckner now is going to have a lot of, um, I guess you'd say, other help, meaning he's not going to have a lot of double teams, a lot more one-on-one -on -one there, defensive line. If he has a big season, 15, 16 sacks, Buckner could go. And I'll throw a little dark horse in at number five, Dante Pettis. I've said he's my favorite receiver on the squad. I've said he will be the number one receiver entering the season. He could burst, right? He could pop. He could have a massive year and maybe be a Pro Bowl or maybe a Pro Bowl substitute for the NFC. Well, that's you guys. If you had to put your money on one player, 
one player for sure making the Pro Bowl from the 49ers roster, who would it be? Type your answers down below. Most of you will probably say Kittle. I think Kittle is the uh, the surefire one on here. All right, moving along. Mm. Brandon Smith on YouTube asks, do you think Richard Sherman could be moved to safety? The answer right now is going to be no, because I don't see him transitioning well at the safety position. Again, uh, the tackling was never that great of a strong suit for Richard Sherman. The speed now is kind of an issue with the Achilles, the burst, the, the changing direction. Safeties need to be like Earl Thomas. They need to be roamers, right? They need to be able to move and cover a lot of ground. I don't see Richard Sherman doing that. I think once he can't play cor uh, cornerback, he could retire. But also, we mentioned this, you know, a couple of questions ago. If he's not 100% coming back from that Achilles year two, because last year only 80%, and Witherspoon and Verrett are playing really, really well, he could lose a starting quarterback, a cornerback job. Like, it's a very real possibility if he's a liability out there. I don't think he's going to be. I've said before, I think he's going to be healthy and surefire, but there is always a possibility of losing the cornerback spot. Okay, um, Machine on YouTube asks, 49ers, what is uh, Jalen Hurd's ceiling? Excellent question. You guys know how big of a big of a Jalen Hurd fan I am, mainly because I went to Baylor. I got to see him up close in person. The ceiling this year... Right, it's not going to be that high. Now the stats from Baylor last year: 69 catches, almost a thousand yards, four touchdowns, 13.7 yards per catch. He also ran the football a lot. The ceiling the first year I think needs to be really low. Right, not like the floor is the ceiling, like very very low. But going forward, I think he could have a nice career as a slot receiver, and at the same time. Yeah, he probably could have some weird jet sweeps or some mix in some runs, some pitches of the backfield. I was Googling what other professional writers or whatever, I guess our professionals thought that uh, his pro comparison was coming out of, uh, of the draft. The, the top three pro comparisons were Terrell Pryor, Jordan Matthews, who's on our team, and Evan Ingram for the, for the size and the athletic ability. So all good comparisons. I think he could be better than Jordan Matthews. Jordan Matthews is a good comparison because Matthews is kind of the same size and runs out of the slot a lot over the middle. I think Hurd could have a better career. I don't want to get too crazy here. You know, he's not I mean, Pro Bowl in the first three years. It's kind of it's kind of hard to do. But at the same time, look at a guy like Ty, like Tyler Lockett, who came out of Kansas State way back in the Big 12 during my time, whenever I, whenever I was there. A lot smaller, different type of player, but was very, you know, under the radar, drafted like the fourth or fifth round, and turned out to just pop on a Russell Wilson and that Pete Carroll offense. So it could be similar to what uh, Jalen Hurd is going to do this year. Question, how many touchdowns do you think Hurd will have this season? In his rookie season, right? Type your number down below. Three, four is safe, right? Six is a lot. You know, six is a lot of touchdowns to have. So I'm curious what you guys say there. Uh, down below. All right, moving along here. Tony G21 on YouTube asks, 49 hashtag 49ers, does the result of this season determine whether Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch keep their jobs? Fun question and a good question. I would I would immediately answer no. John Lynch and, and Kyle Shanahan both signed six-year deals back in 2016. That means they're here for the long run unless you want to cut them or fire them and then pay them a massive amount of money for them not to coach your football team. What I think more matters this season, wins or loss wise, is Jimmy G's health. If Jimmy G is not healthy, right, and, and, and then they have a bad year, we can all sit back and go, well, you know, Shanahan's not had his quarterback yet. If he is healthy and they have a bad year, I think you could still attribute it to being, you know, does he have enough weapons on the outside, a true number one wide receiver? I think this is a bigger year for Jimmy Garoppolo than actually for Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. If Garoppolo's full 16 games and healthy and struggles, like really struggles, I know he's still signed on to like 2022 or 2023, but I could see them potentially trying to shop him or maybe move on from him or maybe just draft his replacement if they're, you know, a four or five win team. Again, that's if he plays all 16 games and if he stinks, which none of us think he's going to. I think he's going to have a massive year. But if you want to talk about who this year this is more important for, Shanahan, Lynch, Garoppolo, I would have to say probably Jimmy Garoppolo. All right, Young RK on YouTube asks, uh, hashtag 49ers, who will win the running back starting job? We can talk about this a little bit on this show. It's Tevin Coleman's job to lose, right? I mean, Jerick McKinnon's coming back off an injury. Matt Breida is still kind of the third string guy, even though he's flashed some talent. Coleman is the number one guy. Last year, after Devontae Freeman got injured in Atlanta, he became the number one back. 167 rushes, 800 yards, 4.8 yards per carry, four touchdowns. I think you put that into a full, you know, 16 game season if he's healthy. I think he's definitely the number one. He has the most talent, excuse me, out of all of them. It will be a running back by committee, and we know McKinnon will get his series, and Breida will get his touches, but I think overall, this is uh, this is Tevin Coleman's uh, job to lose. Again, we mentioned it top of the uh, segment, 
if you want more 49ers stuff, like if you just can't get enough of Chat Sports 49ers stuff, we've made our own YouTube channel. You know, Tom has the Cowboys report and Mitch has the Raiders report. Well, now Tom is. We're trying to get, you know, a YouTube channel for the 49ers. So I can do a lot of coverage for them on that. So if you look up on YouTube, it's in the search bar, Chat Sports 49ers. Most likely the Chat Sports 49ers YouTube page will, will come up. Subscribe to that first and foremost. Or in the search box, www.chatsports forward slash 49ers is another way to find it as well. Again, the more subscribers we have, we get to 1,000, the more videos we can post out. Come on, I know like 10,000 of you guys watch this video every single week. If half of you guys just pause and go subscribe, helps us out a lot and gives you guys a lot more 49ers content. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just, just think about it. Um, let's see. Let's go for one more here. We've got time for one more. Um, Thomas Crow on YouTube asks, Acknowledging the pre that preseason is for determining the backups, how much playing time do you think Jimmy G will see in those games to balance his need for reps and his injury recovery slash risk? Great question here. This is why it's best for last year. So, Mentions Garoppolo's injury, how many, you know, what was the pitch count in the preseason. It's that. It also has to deal with Mullins and Beathard battling it out. You know, I think Nick Mullins could be seeing some reps with, with the ones. Beathard might get a couple reps with the ones in later preseason games to try to determine who could be the backup quarterback. But as far as Jimmy Garoppolo, first game, a series, right? Maybe the first two. Uh, normally in the preseason, you go a series uh, week one. You do about a quarter week two, week three you do a half, and week four you might not not even play maybe another series. Garoppolo, you could dial that back a little bit, but again, the ACL should be good to go, especially after training camp. We should know 100% whether it's right or not. If he starts getting held out of training camp or pushed back during training camp or has a pitch count during training camp, then they might dial back the preseason. But if during training camp, which they're going to start, they're either in it today whenever you're watching this or they start tomorrow depending on when you film it or whenever you view it. Um, I think training camp will determine it, but I don't. I don't think he. I don't think a pitch count is going to be necessary in the preseason. I think he should play as much as any other starter. Which again, one quarter or one one drive, maybe two two drives in uh, week one, a quarter in week two, a half in week three, and then the fourth and final preseason game. Uh, you either get just a drive or just a you know a little touch up here and there. Uh, you've been seeing the 49ers preseason schedule up on your screen: Cowboys at Denver, at Chiefs, and then the Chargers. That Chiefs one. It's going to be a great preseason game because you get Patrick Mahomes' dress rehearsal, our dress rehearsal, their ones versus our ones. That will be a lot of fun to watch. Again, there we go. I mean, we answered as many questions as we could there. We do this from week to week here from time to time on Chat Sports. So during the next video, you ever see me say, get your 49ers questions in. We're doing a mailbag coming up. Use the hashtag 49ers. Ask me a question, and I will try and answer it on the air for you guys. Before we sign off, though, I want to say one, one more time, go subscribe to our new 49ers only YouTube channel, just chatsports.com forward slash 49ers. Do it. Get us to 1,000. I know, like 10,000 of you guys. Watch this. So pause. Go. Subscribe. Come back. Leave more comments, and then enjoy the rest of your day. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this 49ers mailbag as much as I did. We'll have plenty more content next week. And for that, enjoy the rest of your day.